Greetings folks. In this video, we're going to take a look at band pass filters. Again, we're going to be using active filters with our op amps, doing this sort of uh, recipe kind of template kind of design. Well, there's basically two different kinds of band pass filters you can look at. Broadly speaking, we talk about wide band filters and narrow band filters. So you might have something where you were to plot the frequency response, right, you end up with uh, something maybe like this. So you have a, a lower frequency in F1 and a higher frequency in F2. And they're pretty far apart. Okay, so your F1 down here, you know, like maybe if you're doing an audio kind of thing, maybe that's 20 hertz. And F2 is uh, 20 kilohertz. So that difference we call the bandwidth. Right? Bandwidth is F2 minus F1. And I would compare that to the center frequency, F0. If that's really wide, for example, in this case, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, you know, it's a thousand to one ratio, that's best produced by cascading a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter. So you would essentially make a, uh, a high-pass filter that would get you a response like this, and then you'd make a low-pass filter that would give you the response like this. So this red one basically gets rid of everything up here, and the green one gets rid of everything down there, and what you're left with is the blue. All right, so that's a wideband bandpass filter. So in this case, you might say, I'm going to need a second order high pass and a second order low pass, you know, one at two, uh, 20 hertz, in other words, 20 kilohertz, off we go, right? But you might also have something in comparison that's uh, notably tighter. In other words, you might have something like this. So here's your center frequency, right, F0, and your F1 and your F2 are now close in there. For example, F0 might be a kilohertz. F1 might be, you know, 900 hertz. And then the F2 might be 1100 hertz. Okay, so that's 200 hertz bandwidth versus a center frequency of one kilohertz. Right? That ratio we refer to as the Q of the filter. Right? So this is the same Q that we talked about with you know, resonant circuits and, and AC circuits. Right? So we talk about the... Uh, Center frequency, you know, your old resonant frequency divided by the bandwidth. Okay, so tight, you know, you're usually talking about like a Q of, of one or more. Trying to use a high pass, low pass is not really going to cut it because those two frequencies, F1 and F2, they're too close. All right, so to get an accurate kind of response on this. So instead, we just make a resonant sort of circuit out of this. Even then we have choices though. Um, if it's a fairly modest cue, two, three, four, five, something like that, um, we could get away with a single op amp. If it's a high cue, generally 10 or more, we're gonna have to use something a little fancier, something like a state variable filter, which would require, uh, depending on the configuration, three or, or four um, op amps, right? Okay, so I am going to do uh, kind of a middle of the road thing here, a sort of a simple, uh, sort of modest cue, not one of these guys, but not some super high thing either. So let's say we desire our filter to have a uh, center frequency of 500 hertz. Okay, and I want a bandwidth of, let's say, 100 hertz. So roughly 50 hertz on either side. In other words, I want it to go from about 450 hertz up to about 550 hertz. Right? F0 really is uh, the square root of F1 times F2. So it's not exactly 450. And 550, in this case, they're slightly shifted up. Um, but, you know, close enough. If you, if you run out the numbers, you'll see it's very, very close. Okay. So roughly 450 and 550 is what I'm looking for. Um, I would also like a system that's unity gain. In other words, at the resonant frequency, 
I want the input signal to be just uh, the same size at the output. Okay, in other words, kind of what I've drawn here. If this is zero dB, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so what I'm what I'm going to do is find a template for this. There is a template in the text called a multiple feedback filter. As a matter of fact, there's two of them. One of them is a unity gain version, and the other is not. So the uh, the non unity gain version. Um, will will produce a gain depending on what your cue is okay what this guy is um, what does the template look like the template looks like this now this is essentially based the core of this is on an inverting amplifier remember that the high pass low pass ones we looked at um, those are based on a, a series parallel, non-inverting amplifier, the Salonen key voltage controlled voltage source. So here's um, sort of one RC combo. In the unity gain version, there's two resistors out here. In the non-unity gain, there's just a single resistor out here. So this actually acts as a little um, attenuator, a little voltage divider to bring the signal down to compensate for what the gain is going to be. And then I have another resistor and capacitor pair out here. Okay, so before we look at numbers, just some general ideas. If you think in terms of a normal um, inverting amplifier, all right, I'll just sketch one over here real quick. We know the gain of this thing is a function of RF over RI. Right? That's the gain of the amplifier. Well, now we have reactive components. So for a moment, if you just look at this pair, at really low frequencies, this cap opens up. If you think of that as RI, right, and this is your RF, what happens at low frequencies is you don't get any gain because this is huge, right? It's RF over RI. So this basically only gives gain to the higher frequencies. The exact opposite happens over here, right, with this pair. At, um, at very high frequencies, this thing shorts out, and you don't get any gain. So the pair of them, basically one, one pair gives you this side of the curve, and the other pair gives you this side of the curve. Okay? That's basically how it's going to work. All right, so the template gives you, again, these kind of crazy values that we've come to be you know, used to. One farad, one farad. This resistor is two times Q, as is this one. And then over here we have a Q value, and then this is Q. This resistor right here is uh, Q divided by 2Q squared minus 1. All right. So there's DV, uh, derivations of these in the text, but that, that's the template, right? So that's our multiple feedback filter. And, of course, like all the templates, this is tuned what a critical frequency of uh, one radian per second. All right, so the first thing I need to do is decide, right, Q. What's my Q? How do I find Q? Well, Q is uh, resonant frequency divided by bandwidth. Our bandwidth is 100 hertz, so I can find out what Q is. I'll just take 500 hertz. Divide by my bandwidth of 100. And I have a Q of 5. All right. So I'm just going to take that Q of 5, plug it in here, and see what I get. So when I do that, this obviously becomes 5 ohms. And then 5 divided by um, basically 49. Q squared, 25 times 2 is 50 minus 1 is 49. That's going to work out to 0 0.102 ohms. Okay, so now the green version, oh, can't forget these two guys, they turn into 10 ohms. So this green version essentially is uh, a 1 radian per second center frequency with a Q of 5. So just as we did before, we have to do a frequency scale, right? And remember how we do that. Critical frequency is 1 over 2 pi RC. 
So we pick either R or C. We drive that down by an appropriate factor to drive FC up by that same factor. So what is the factor that we need? Well, we have a, an omega here. A, a, if you want to be consistent here, let's call this omega zero. We have that at one radian per second. So we need uh, 500 hertz. And of course, um, omega is 2 pi f. So our target value is 2 pi times 500 hertz, or 1,000 pi. Okay, that's approximately 3142 radians per second. So we, like I said, choose either R or C. What do you want to do? Well, as I said in a preceding video, you know, I like having one unity for the caps because, you know, I know I can get 10 nanofarad caps, 100 nanofarad caps, and so on and so forth. It's easy. Um, and resistor values, it's a lot easier to get uh, weird values for them than it is for the capacitors. So once again, I'm going to go through and um, divide all my resistors by this sort of crazy uh, value, 3,142, and see what I wind up with. Okay. Okay. So when I do that, divide 10 ohms by, I'll just start over here, 3142. And, you know, what do we wind up with? Okay. Well, that's going to turn into, uh, for both of these guys, that's going to turn into uh, 3.183 milliohms. This guy over here, all right, the 5 ohm, that's half the value, so that's going to be roughly 1.592 milliohms. And then this little guy over here turns into 32.47 microohms. Again, keeping the 1 farad capacitors. So we use the red version. And we have what we asked for, 500 hertz, bandpass filter, unity gain with a Q of 5. In other words, a bandwidth of 100 hertz. It is, of course, completely impractical. Micro-ohm resistors, 1 farad capacitors. That's craziness. So, second thing. What do we do after the frequency scale? We do a Z scale. All right, do an impedance scale. So again, back to this formula, I can increase the R as long as I drop the C by the same factor, and F will not change. So now what do you want to uh, wind up with over here? Come up with a good value. I'm going to redraw this. It's getting a little busy over there. So, you know, what looks good? 10 to the third, 10 to the fifth. 10 to the 97th? Now, there isn't a specific answer. And by the way, you don't have to use, you know, a factor of 10. You could scale something by 25,000 if you wanted to, you know, if that happened to work out well. Um, you know, I like to use like, you know, 10 to the 7th or 10 to the 8th or, you know, something like that for the very simple reason that you're just sliding a decimal point around. It's really easy to do in your head. Okay. But in the real world, you have to worry about finding actual components, okay? You know, standard component sizes. So um, in this one, to get, you know, reasonable sorts of numbers, because I don't want to wind up with microfarads or picofarads, you know, we might use something like uh, 10 to the 7th. So if I did that, right, again, I multiply the caps by 10 to the 7th, excuse me, the resistors, Make the resistors go up by 10 to the 7th, and that'll make the capacitors go down by 10 to the 7th. Okay, so the caps, you divide them by 10, 10 to the 7th. Um, one farad divided by 10 to the 7th is going to get you 100 nanofarads. And then we multiply uh, the resistor values, and um, these two things are going to work out to 31.83K. And then these two guys over here, 
We're going to work out to 15.92K. Uh, and 324.7 ohms. So again, you're going to have to find you know close standard values. You might have to tweak these things a little bit. But there's our completed design. All right, we have ourselves a 500 hertz uh, unity, you know, unity gain bandpass filter with a QF5. In other words, a bandwidth of 100 hertz. So roughly an F1 of 450 and an F2 of about 550. Okay, slightly skewed up, but a good approximation. Okay, if you needed a Q of 10 or 15 or 20, you would go to a state variable filter. A little bit more complicated, but it's still the same idea. You come up with a template, plug the values in, do your F scale, do your Z scale. There you go. Okay, now we're here on Tina TI, ready to do a simulation. So I've recreated our circuit design here, multiple feedback filter. I've got a uh, nice bifed op amp, TL081. Uh, similar to uh, an LF351, 15-volt power supplies. I've thrown a 15K load out here, not a critical value. Let's see what we get. All right, so we should have this nice peaking response, a fairly narrow uh, uh, passband. So we're going to uh, run this from 10 hertz on the bottom end to 10 kilohertz on the top end. Logarithmic display. Let's see what we get. Okay, obvious peaking response. Let's grab a cursor over here. So this should be peaking, you know, right around that 500 hertz range. And so here we are, we can just see a tiny fraction of a, a decibel here, millidecibel. So that's 500 hertz, that looks good as our design goal. And, um, we were looking for about 50 hertz on either side of this as the 3 dB down points. So here we are at almost minus 3, 450. I'm right, going to go a little further. All right, you can see it's swinging over to the other side. And as we go down on this end, get to about minus 3. And about, again, 550. Um, so that gives us the appropriate bandwidth that we would expect, 450 to 550. All right, 100 hertz bandwidth, 500 hertz center frequency, there's our Q of 5. Looking good. 